Welcome everyone to Made in New York <laughs> Animation Project Showcase and welcome to everyone joining TAP's live stream on YouTube and everyone on BronxNet TV. I'm Sanjona Arzan and I'm proud to be one of TAP's training program alumnus and one of your hosts for today's event. And I'm Christina Oligario Loy. I am a creative arts intern at TAP and your other host for this evening. Let's jump right into the celebration. Uh, get ready for loads of animated shorts by hundreds of young artists, storytellers, and creatives in New York City. Join a conversation about unique career pathways, how to get your work out there, and what's next for TAP and our participants. And now to kick us off, I'm thrilled to introduce TAP's Associate Executive Director, Natasha Amendolara. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Sanjona. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. Just going to catch my breath because I ran in here. I'm so excited to be here celebrating with this incredible community. To the TAP participants, trainees, graduates, tonight is about you. Whether you've attended one TAP group or hundreds of TAP groups, we know it's not easy to show up to a group amidst countless other responsibilities, to meet people for the first time, to tell your story, to express yourself through your artwork, your characters, your voice acting, and your creative vision. We know it's not easy to learn something new or to keep pushing towards your dreams even when they might feel far away. It's not easy, but you do it. You show up, you work so hard, you champion one another, you put yourselves out there. You are the next generation of storytellers, artists, animators, directors, and leaders and it is a privilege to share space with you, to bear witness to your creativity and the communities of collaboration that you so beautifully build with one another. It is an absolute honor to celebrate you tonight. At TAP, we believe deeply in the power of community, and we would not be able to do what we do without our incredible community of partners, supporters, and collaborators. Thank you to our partners at the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment and the New York City Department of Probation for their advocacy and support of the TAP program. Thank you to our industry council, many of whom are here tonight, um, who collaborate and consult with us toward advancing a more equitable and diverse workforce. Thank you to our funders and sponsors of tonight's event, the New York City Department of Col Cultural Affairs, Paramount, Giphy, and Titmouse, to our site partners, the principals, teachers, support staff, program directors, and coordinators, everyone who makes it possible for our teams to work with our extraordinary students and community members. Thank you to the TAP team, truly the most creative, passionate, and dedicated group of people I have ever met. A special shout out to TAP's program director, Stephanie Seifert, for leading the charge on coordinating this very special evening. To our friends at BronxNet TV, thank you for streaming the event, and hello to everyone tuning in from home. And a huge thank you to the team here at the SVA Theater for hosting us. And to all of you, our audience, thank you for attending this evening, for celebrating the incredible work of New York City's emerging artists, a community of young people who are changing the game as we speak. Tonight, we'll see work from over 700 of TAP's participants, trainees, and graduate apprentices. 35 animated projects across 11 different programs from California to the five boroughs of New York City. Congratulations to our artists, and enjoy the show, everyone. Thank you so much, Natasha. And now that we have settled in, I want you guys to relax, kick back, and enjoy some animations. <laughs> Here's a taste of the films we are going to watch today.
beautiful works and what an amazing score paired with the work. The score was actually made by our friends at Inception Orchestra and we will talk more about that collaboration later. But I want to ask you guys now, are you ready to watch some animations? Okay, here we go. <laughs> First up is the work of TAP's core programs. This includes our six-week summer program, our year-long school programs, and our 12-week community programs located in neon sites throughout the five boroughs. In these groups, participants collaborate as a group to tell one story. They write the script, design the characters, storyboard, voice the characters, choose the music, and direct the animator, bringing their story to life as an animated short. And as a reminder, here at TAP, we feel it's so important to recognize the creativity and talents of everyone who contributed to the work you're about to see. Each short will conclude with the names of the participants involved in its creation. Feel free to applaud and support these creatives. Without further ado, we are proud to present the work of TAP's core programs. Grab your popcorn and enjoy. In the town of Townsburg, there was a population of only 50 people. There was very little sign of life in this quaint little town. The only sign of such was the music that the only band in town made. However, once the band members went their separate ways, the sole member that remained was left all alone. To his shock, the guitar of his dreams is real, and so, with the savings from his band days, he bought the instrument. Later that night, as he played the instrument, his emotions got swept up in his performance, and something unexpected happened. Oh my god, I love this song. It reminds me when the town was first built. It also makes me feel a deeper connection with you. Excuse me, who are you? I am your great grand family member. Everything you feel, I feel too, because I was also not accepted by my family. We can band together and rule this land. 
But first, we have to rid our family's control of it. Come on. Um, I don't think hurting my family will make me feel better. Well, you will see the consequences of not joining me. I didn't know what you've been through. It must be very painful. No wonder you are bitter. I understand that you are hurt, but destroying the tree is not the answer. We deserve to be here just like anyone else. <laughs> I only wanted to be a part of the family. I understand. It has been a long time. Maybe they've changed their minds. Together, we can make our own place at the table. I'd love to hear more about you. Come with me. What happened to me? Listen, if you don't want to be a cat, we can go to Meow Pitter, where you can become human again. The choice is yours, but just know that if you take this catnip, it will not cure the way you feel. You will go back to your regular life. If you stay, you can work on your inner confidence. The choice is always yours. This is the most fun I ever had and experiencing things I never thought I would as a cat. I want to stay with my new friend. anonymously released. The government has been tricking people <gasps> and withholding rights and resources from all of us. <gasps> the question is, is the government really helping us or are they hurting us? <gasps> ah. 
I gotta go make sure this government isn't hurting anybody. I know I've been assigned by the government, but it's my duty to protect the people. Don't worry, I know where she is. So, hey, I'm Emil Simavo. My parents sent me away to boarding school in the big city when I was just a little girl. It was lonely, and I was lonely. Students took notice and called me names and other mockeries. But I'm a normal 17-year-old girl. Rather, I thought I was for my whole life until two weeks ago when I started acting strange. I thought I was the only one. What do you want? Get away from me. Wait! Wow, it's double sealed, huh? Your powers are getting stronger. I know what that blast was. You seem new to your powers. Huh? How do you know what I did? I don't even know what it is. But it can't be. That's impossible. If you would allow me, let me explain. I'm Tempe, and you're a witch just like me. Emulse, right? But how do you know what? I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. My only goal was to be a normal girl at this academy. Then you just vomited m magic energy everywhere. But how is this possible? And if we are witches, how do you know how to control your powers but I can't control mine? I can help with that. The answers you're looking for lie in your past, Emu. How do I know I can trust you? I don't even know you. I know how scary and tempting it can be when your powers first appear. When I found out about my powers, I did naughty things. What do you mean? Let's just say I was quite a rabble rouser, mischievous person. You and me, winter break, we're going to train. Well, thanks, I guess. I don't want to be here. Why is she wearing? I'm hungry. Why is the teacher failing me? He talks too much. One is cool from the end. Why is she sitting next to me? I thought we were cool. What are you talking about? You have a problem with me sitting next to you? Are you going crazy? I didn't say anything. Why are you lying? I heard you say it. That was the last strike. You two go to the principal's office. So what happened at school today? Who I thought was my friend said something about me and then she said she didn't say it. So did you verbally hear her say it? I heard it, but I didn't see her mouth move. I think it's time we have that talk. Come with us. What is this place? This is a meditation room for you to control your powers. Um, what powers? All the voices you hear are from your powers. You can read people's minds. What? Why was I never aware of this? We just wanted you to have a normal life and to fit in with others. We also wanted to make sure that you were safe because if your powers were exposed to the world, people would try to hurt you. So when, we, when you were young, we put a yin-yang necklace on you to suppress your powers. 
We have the powers too, we know how to control them. Now it's your turn. Hi, I'm Jamie. How's your day going? Um, I am Liddy. It's going nice. What you working on? Uh, I am working on a gaming project that I am creating. That's awesome. I love gaming projects. Can I see? Um, okay. I made a game that shows my passion for hair and fashion. I love your curls. We do not like you being so interested in gaming. We rather you do something else with your life. Besides. Gaming is for boys, not girls. Girls can do anything a boy can, and at the end of the day, as long as I am happy, that's all that should matter to me. People can bully you for that because it's not normal for girls to play video games. Is it not normal to be gay out there? Get out of my house. Go. I wish my parents wasn't so judgmental. I feel so angry and upset that I'm not accepted. Well, I accept you, and I love you for who you are and who you decided to be. Your parents will end up coming around. Oh my gosh, I got an idea. Let's make a video game together. Your father and I talked about it and we apologize for not accepting who you are, what you want to do, and who you want to love. I felt this could have been avoided if we talked about this long time ago, but despite not to feel you accepted, I still love you guys. We love you too, Lily. There is nothing better in life than to see our daughter happy.
Mom, can I go to the water, please? Yes, of course, but please be careful. Hey guys, why are you doing this again? I want to see if the legend about the haunted house is true. Wait, did you all hear that? Stop! Don't go any further! Ah! The legend is true. You won't make it out alive. Yeah, okay. We're just gonna go. Are you guys sure you want to go inside? Come on, it's gonna be fine, right? We're already here. Oh no! Help, help, we're not seeing it. Where are we? Come on, there's all these weird symbols and stuff. Wait, I know what we need to do. Do you see a painting nearby? Uh, yeah? You need the matches to open the door. Hey, what's happening? What is that noise? Got it. We gotta get out of here. Hey Sally, you good? The world's about to end! <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Sally talk about the world gonna explode? Yeah, why are you looking at me? You know Sally be tripping sometimes. So it's effective. That's a no, you're both crazy. Do you think I'm crazy? No, 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 no. Just let me finish up here. Done. Finally? What? what? Hey, Sally. Sally? Sally, I need to tell you something. Vector, I know what to do. Uh, okay. I trust you. We gotta hurry. To your lab. Get to hacking. We need those satellites. Way ahead of you. Get ready. Moving B3 to B4. 
Right, Sally? You're so right. We told ya. We sure did. We, we did, did it. it. I'm not sorry to this. I didn't even know Sally was like that for real. Well, I guess I'm like that. Well, I guess you are. What was it you were saying earlier back here? I was having a vision. Well, basically, I was trying to say, it sounds dumb, probably won't work after this, but basically. Wonderful and uh, so lucky that we get to see these final products and also think about how wonderful the process was and the work of teamwork and co-creation. Just so amazing. If you were a participant in one of the animations we just saw, make some noise. <laughs> Great. And let's give it up for uh, everybody who has worked on the TAP score program. And now it's time to celebrate the work of TAP's training program. It's a 18 session long program where trainees learned the fundamentals of several industry standard softwares and strengthened their career readiness skills were creating original GIF animations. Trainees earned digital badges in career readiness and technical skills that they can use to elevate their resumes and websites. Let's watch some of their amazing final projects in GIFs galore. There were so many beautiful artwork there, and I'm amazed by the va uh, variation in art styles and the expression on the characters were just on point. And I hope they continue to make such amazing works because I would love to see more of them. And if you just saw your GIF on the big screen, make some noise! Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to the graduates of the TAP training program.
Okay, now it is time to shift gears and welcome onto the stage today's discussion panel. As our panel joins the stage, feel free to take a one minute stretch break with me if you want. You can stand up and do any stretch that you need to do or you can just sit there for one minute while we get everybody up. Okay, great. All right, welcome back from your stretch. Uh, I'd like to introduce today's panelists, animator, illustrator, TAP alumnus, and panel moderator, Antis Milyakov. <laughs> Runner at the mill, Sude Kirvin. <laughs> and senior talent acquisition specialist and TAP's industry outreach advisor, Kat Galaxy. Hello, I'm Entis, and I'm going to be moderating this group. And to begin our discussion, we'll have some introductions. So again, I'm Entis, and I've been in, I've been involved with TAP since around 2020 uh, as an intern, and trainee, and also being an apprentice in their studios. Uh, currently, I'm doing more freelance work with a bunch of projects lined up, all that jazz, and I'll hand it over to either. So we'll, we'll go down. We'll go down the line. Hello, everyone. Um, so nice to see you all here tonight. I'm Kat. Um, I'm the industry outreach advisor, as um, the team so kindly introduced me, or us, I should say. Um, I'm also an outreach partner for Nickelodeon, and um, I work as a recruiter for a few different studios here in New York and in Los Angeles. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sude. I'm, uh, I want to say recent graduate. I graduated a year ago, I can't believe this year is That's recent, that's recent. <laughs> okay, if you say, <laughs> if you say so. Um, and I'm also a runner at the mill. And I, I personally, this is my first TAP event and I'm just amazed by the talent and creativity that we just witnessed with these shorts and I'm really excited to be here. So thanks for having me. So uh, a good question would be, how did we all come to this point? So as in what skills did we find along the, our way here and how does it apply to our current positions? And I'll hand that off. I can go. Um, so I guess as a recent graduate, before I got to the finish line, I had this feeling of, oh, um, this city has so much to offer in terms of being involved in animation, and I should definitely um, put myself out there more. And I heard this from Kat. Uh, she was my professor at Pratt. And also a lot of people, how this city and this industry in general is so small, and I found out that it is the case every time I go to a networking event, I run into the same people. And so that was, I guess, my way of getting involved. I don't wanna sway away from the question, but just putting yourself out there. Say, so that's, I guess, how I ended up here. <laughs> I definitely agree on the networking piece. I think it's really important to be able to connect with everyone, follow up with people, have conversations with people, as Sude was mentioning. Um, adding to this as well, I think it's really, really important, and without sounding too cheesy, but anyone who knows me knows I'm very cheesy. Um, it's really important to be kind and empathetic to other people in this industry. We all work so closely together. As Sude said, it's a very small industry, so being able to support one another and encourage one another, especially when you know, our industry might ebb and flow, it's really important to have that connection with others. Um, so 
again, back to the cheesy factor, but really, you know, there's so much community in what we do and collaboration in what we do. So looking out for each other and being supportive of each other is really important, in my opinion, our opinion, I think. I think we all feel that way. Absolutely. And I would agree with networking events. Um, f specifically from a tap, I did learn uh, 3D materials and how to use the programs effectively. And I say that would really project me in the right way in only a few weeks too. Um, to follow up, what external resources have you found useful? Either materials online, uh, softwares, other internships, such as? Absolutely. I think Sude can, can speak to this quite a, while, quite a bit, and I'll add on. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if I had to circle back to networking events, there is always something happening in New York. For instance, either TAPS programming or things like Animation Nights New York or Animation Speakeasy, as well as organizations like Women in Animation's New York local chapter, as well as more remote orgs like Asians in Animation, Rise Up Animation. There's a vast world of resources out there that I feel like sometimes you're not going to find out through school, so you'll have to do a little bit of digging, but once you start researching, it all starts coming up, and there is so many people out there that you can meet. I think that's um, all these organizations and the people I've met through them have been immensely helpful in my journey from uh, going through my senior year of college and graduation where I was feeling a little lost and then I found myself both volunteering for these organizations as well as just going to events and talking to people online and networking and I realized you know you're not alone there's so many people that would love to meet with you and um, so in that sense those organizations are a great resource and yeah just research I think that's the best thing that I was able to do but yeah Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I think also there's so many free opportunities to teach yourself specific softwares and network with others, to Suda's point. Um, you listed a lot of organizations that are based here in New York um, that for which you can all have access to. Um, access VFX has a website, accessvfx.org. I'm always plugging them because they use uh, Prospera, which is kind of like a, a software that's comparable to that of Slack. Um, they'll pair you with a mentor in the world of animation, games, or VFX. You'll meet with someone at the senior level in our industry. Um, you can meet with them on Slack, sometimes in person. And um, it's a great way to sort of learn more about our industry while also sort of expanding upon your skills. Um, for those of you who want to learn 2D or 3D, you know, Blender's a really great software. They've got an exceptional, um, you know, uh, list of tutorials. YouTube is a great resource, also free for many different tutorials. As someone who um, only just a few years ago paid off my student debt, I don't want anyone spending money on things. So <laughs> there's, you, there's so many free things, and uh, thanks for the, the applause. But I think it's really important to, to sort of explore what's, really f what's, what's free out there. That's really, really important. So um, there's a lot out there. I would highly recommend finding a library with an art section, take a picture of the book, guaranteed there's a free PDF out there. I have at least half a terabyte full of this stuff. It's amazing. Love that. So true. So our next question might apply to the audience where you might have imposter syndrome about the work you do, the quality of your work, or you feel inadequate, but you still yearn for your dream job, don't you? So how do you get over your fear, fear of applying? Well, one thing you sort of touched upon is this idea of feeling uh, sort of like that imposter syndrome. Um, the bad news is, is that in no matter what level of your career you might be, imposter syndrome is uh, not something that goes away. You know, as someone who's worked in the industry for several years, worked with a number of organizations in animation and VFX, um, imposter syndrome is still very much there, I'm afraid. Um, that said, I do think it's really important to put yourself out there, get out of this discomfort of applying for many opportunities. I have a colleague at uh, Nickelodeon um, who's an incredible production coordinator, and she applied for over, especially during the pandemic, she applied for over 900, and I think she said 937 opportunities, and she's incredible. 
and uh, you know, incredibly organized. You know, can list every specific opportunity to which she applied, and um, she got her dream job and a great opportunity at, at Nickelodeon. And she speaks about this very, very openly because I think perseverance, really, or perseverance, if I can speak, um, really gets you towards your goals in your career. And I think it's also important to know that no matter how much you try, there's still that barrier that you can break through um, to get to the next step in your, your opportunity. So just definitely try to challenge yourself, put yourself out there, expose yourself to these opportunities because you never know who's gonna respond to you. Um, in many circumstances, it's about timings in which you're applying for jobs. In many other circumstances, it's the connections that Suda has been sort of speaking about. Um, but I've been yammering on too much. Let's hear from Suda. Uh, well, you actually put it perfectly. And we were talking about imposter syndrome just now. I feel it right now being here. Um, but just like Kat said, putting yourself out there, it was a mentality that took me a while to get into, but you don't lose anything by just applying for an opportunity. And what I realized was I'd rather apply and get the rejection knowing that I tried than never apply and not know if I would have gotten it or not. And for me, I stopped counting how many roles I applied to after some point, but it did take me 11 months after graduating. I hope it I hope no one else has to try for that long. But it was, like you said, a matter of both timing and also connections because um, I was lucky enough to have uh, a friend from Pratt who put my name in, which led me, which led to my first interview. So which is why I'm always telling people network and make sure you have those connections because I don't know if I would have on my role otherwise. But um, yeah, I don't really have much to add to what you just said. You just described everything perfectly. So did you feel that? Yeah, never stop feeling that fire. So with our few minutes remaining, I was curious if the audience had any questions for our group. We are limited to three questions, so if you would like to ask, please raise your hands. All right. Um, what is the what? The question is, what is the mill? And I believe our runner can answer that. Um, the mill is a visual effects studio. Um, I feel like Kat, you're actually more, well, you've been there longer than me. Um, but Yes, <laughs> so um, they mostly do advertising uh, and some little bit of film, what I've seen. I don't know, I feel like you can say more about the mill. I've just finished my first month there. So. Well, yeah, no, this, and that's a great thing. We should be <laughs> celebrating that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the mill is based here in New York. It started off as a studio over 30 years ago in um, London and then expanded into New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Um, I know a bit about the mill because I did grow up there. That's where I started my career. I also began my career much like Suda as a runner. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, they do a lot in the way of commercials. That's what they're predominantly known for. If any of you watch the Super Bowl, um, I'm personally more of a soccer fan, not American football. So apologies to everyone in here or who might you know, appeal to that, but they're known for their Super Bowl commercials every year. Um, the mill will often work on the majority of the commercials that you'll see, um, whether it's the Budweiser spot you might have seen um, this past year, or gosh, there are quite a few that came out this past year. But um, but yes, commercials. You put it better I? than I could have. Yeah. Oh, you, you were great. There's you a few that I've witnessed, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say what they are now, so. That NDA, NDA factor. I don't know if they release yet or not. Can I, yep. Um, we had two more over there uh, in the blue shirt. The question is, when do we accept the intern program or when it starts? When we start. I believe they're seasonal. Oh, you're, you're talking about with, with the mill or with? Or with tap. Oh, well, um, that's a great question. Nickelodeon um, has a writer's program. 
Um, oh, that's that's awesome. Understand um, uh, or understood. Um, I'm not in charge of that that department at Nickelodeon, but there is a program to which you could apply and connect with individuals. So um, I can try to touch base with you off the back of, of our chat. And, and the last question, you down there? I, I'm in a similar position right now because I have like three projects going on, one of them personal and two of them volunteering. So of course we all want money for the work that we do, but you do have to beef up your portfolio first. I would highly recommend making a website and communicating with other artists who can provide you that leverage that you need. Um, eventually you'll get into a spot. Don't feel bad if it's just, you know, running around getting people coffees on set or something, because you'll chat with them too, and they'll like you, and then you're gonna get somewhere, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah, don't be afraid to pitch whatever you're working on, show little tidbits of what's going on, and yeah. Yeah, I think it's beautifully said. I mean, you, you, you hit the nail on the head there, 100%. Cool. And I believe we're gonna wrap up the discussion now, unless there's anyone else. Uh, yeah, so I think, um, I'm not sure what your specific area of interest is, but for animation production assistant roles are generally considered as the most entry level. Um, you're not required to apply with a portfolio and you're still part of that animation production while having the opportunity to meet with artists or um, network within the studio. So uh, production assistant roles would be a good start. I know that the mill has roles such as runner or scheduler that are also entry level non-art roles that are good places to start. Yeah, do you know of any others? Kat? I mean, I, I think you said that really nicely, uh, especially if you're interested in, a world of, uh, in the world of production, a runner position, a um, receptionist position, a uh, production assistant, as Sude also mentioned. Um, I've seen a lot of artists also come into their respective roles by way of other roles, whether they worked in finance. You know, roles are, and this is the most important thing, and I've, I've talked about this in the past, you know, uh, opportunities are often um, nonlinear, and that's a pretty amazing thing. Um, each of us have our own unique voices and ways in which we've gotten into the industry, and it's important that you each have your unique story and that not everyone has the same trajectory because that really, really um, enhances the quality of a studio and how people work together and collaborate with each other. So um, each of you has your own unique story on how you are in this industry or how you will go and explore your roles in this industry. Um, so I encourage you all to sort of you know, challenge yourselves and see what, what might be the next step for yourselves because um, there's a lot of different paths out there and it's kind of exciting to figure out what, what resonates with you most. As any variation of artist you may be, you'll quickly realize that you will have to wear many different hats, no matter what you do. Independent with a studio, it doesn't matter. And it's, it's a fluidity to it. And you'll realize how to apply those skills in different uh, areas. Well, thank you for joining us for this discussion. It was great talking to you all, and I hope that you had some insight from us as well. So. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much to the panel. Thank you to Sude and Entis and Kat. 
Uh, it's so lovely when we can have space to uh, exchange and share wisdom and knowledge um, and just expand accessibility around what we know and what we know as a collective. Uh, great, San Jonah. Speaking of next step opportunities, many TAP training program graduates like me and Entis are hired as TAP apprentices in the TAP studio. TAP Studio is TAP's professional animation studio comprising a team of industry professional animators and skilled apprentices. We will now present this year's TAP Studio projects. TAP Studio's first client this year was the Children's Services Council of Broward County, Florida. The CSC's mission is to provide leadership, advocacy, and resources necessary to enhance the lives of the children of Broward County and empower them to become responsible, productive adults through collaborative planning and funding of a continuum of uh, quality care. TAP Studio was tasked with creating a 2D animated PSA, bringing awareness to the Baker Act, which focuses on crisis services for individuals with mental illness. The PSA is currently in post-production. Look out for it on our YouTube channel very soon. Um, the TAP Studio apprentice, Sean White, is now going to share a little bit about his experiences working on the project. My time working on this PSA was honestly very enjoyable. I found that commission-based work takes a lot of uh, creativity and ingenuity that uh, you don't see in many fields of work. It, it honestly helped me on my creative journey and allowed me to become much better as a creative. Going forward with my career, I've worked on a number of different small projects with other uh, creatives. For one, I have a webcomic that I work on with a couple of colleagues in a group called Psychosis. Our Instagram is at uh, thecurocanvas on Instagram if you want to follow us there and see more of our work. And also, I worked on a number of different short films that I can't really get into because they're not they're not in uh, post production yet, so I cannot really speak on it. But I do have a number of projects that I will be releasing soon. So, thanks for listening, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the showcase. Thank you to Sean for your talent and reflections. <laughs> Next, Tap Studio worked with Youth Justice Network. YJN's mission is to break cycles of incarceration and build an equitable justice system by providing young people with individualized advocacy, mentorship, and opportunities to grow, thrive, and lead. TAP Studio was tasked with creating a 2D animated PSA educating currently incarcerated youth about the law library resource available to them. This PSA is also currently in post-production. Look out for it on our YouTube channel very soon. Here are the two main characters of the PSA, Ty and Eli, designed by TAP Studio Apprentice Donuts. Give it up for their incredible designs. Uh, I'm going to read now some reflections from Donuts. Hello everyone, my name is Denisha Montgomery, though my friends call me Donuts, and I am a visual development artist. I graduated from TAP, the TAP training program, back in 2019. And since then, I've graduated from the Laguna College of Art and Design with a BFA in animation. As a recent college grad, I now dedicate my time to sharpening my skills and refining my portfolio with a hope of soon breaking into the animation gaming industry. For the YJN PSA, I was tasked with developing and refining the design for the two main characters of the PSA, Ty and Eli. The experience alone was eye-opening, and having a solid team like Stephanie and Hoda to work alongside made the process all the more fun. I got to utilize a lot of the skills I learned in college to perform my tasks to the best of my ability. That was definitely a major highlight. Only real challenge was me having to pace myself in a real studio-like setting, but with a reliable team always keeping track, that, hurdled, that hurdle was jumped rather quickly. I'm proud of the work I was able to contribute to the project and even more proud that I was able to utilize my skills to help such a talented group of people. Thank you, Donuts, for your talent and reflections. Let's give it up for her. <laughs> Next up, Tab Studio was approached by our partners at Giphy Arts with a unique opportunity. 
Giphy Arts is devoted to GIF art and artists. They hold and sponsor events, commission artworks, generate new creation tools, collaborate with institutions, and more. Tap Studio was tasked with commissioning an apprentice to create a new set of 10 animated GIF stickers following the theme of anti-gun gun violence awareness. Donuts was hired again and rose to the occasion. Let's check out their sticker pack. Let's yeah. give it up. Sure. <laughs> Beautiful work. And make sure to follow Donuts and Tab's channels on Giphy.com. I'm now going to read some reflections from Donuts. Hey, it's Donuts again. I also worked on the GIFs, uh, stickers designs for Giphy. Overall, my experience was rather smooth and enlightening. It was challenging formatting such a message in a way where it can be deemed easily digestible, given that the topic at hand is a heavy one. But seeing as I had such creative freedom, that obstacle didn't block my path for long. Looking back, I'm proud of how I was able to format the message, tone, and theme into individual images that spoke true to what our clients at Giphy were looking for. Thank you, Donuts. One more time, let's give it up for them. <laughs> Lastly comes another unique opportunity for Tap Studio. Music is an important part of animation. It is meant to support and enhance the story. As many creators here may know, an animation needs a score, and it's not an easy task to make that happen, especially if you are an independent or student animator. Inception Orchestra is a nonprofit that strives to provide accessible and inspiring mentorship, nurturing the growth of student composers, fostering a sense of community, and expanding the world's musical library one piece at a time. The young composers and mentors of Inception Orchestra collaborated with two of TAP's young animators, Giovanni Garcia and Osser Johnson, to score their animations. First, you'll watch five versions of Giovanni's GIF, Stargazer, each accompanied by a different composer's score, demonstrating how music impacts our experience of visual content. This will be followed by Osser's college thesis fi film, Intrepid, which is in its pre-vis phase and will be completed next year. Let's check them out. Juno, do you understand what it truly means to be a hunter? You must be focused and patient until you find the perfect time to strike. You only get one shot, so watch closely. Sounds easy enough. Hey, are you paying attention? Did you even listen to a word I said? 
There are rules to this, you know? Go find your axe. Let's try again. Juno? Giovanni and Asa are now going to share a bit about their experience working with the young composers of Inception Orchestra. By joining this scoring program through the animation project as an animator, I had the opportunity to learn to become a director, but I also got to see the hard work behind creating and scoring compositions. Being part of the brainstorming sessions was really fun, and I absolutely loved the collaborative environment. Thank you, the Classical Saxophone Project, the Animation Project, and Inception Orchestra for this amazing opportunity. Working with the Inception program has helped me understand storytelling through sound and music. As an animator, I tend to develop my skills in visual storytelling, but by understanding beats, tone, and the power of a score, I've seen how multiple aspects of a film can come together to create an even better story. Thank you to Giovanni and Osser for that amazing speech. And that's not all for this exciting collaboration. Not only did Inception Orchestra's young composers score Giovanni and Osser's work, but they also created the score for today's showcase reel at the top of the show. Let's give it up one more time for the team at Inception Orchestra. <laughs> and the party doesn't stop there. Prepare to be captivated as our friends at the Classical Saxophone Project take the stage on June 7th to perform all the tap scores live to picture. This concert is a celebration of artistic achievement and the power of music to transcend boundaries. Scan the Q QR code on the screen and save the link to watch the live stream of the entire season finale concert. And now, Sanjona, everyone, it is time for some prizes. <laughs> if you entered the raffle in the lobby, please take out your ticket now and uh, help me welcome to the stage TAP Creative Arts Therapist, Danielle Newmark. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. If your number is called, please wave your ticket and give us a yell. And at the end of the show, head to the raffle table in the lobby, and I will be waiting there. And you must have your ticket or a photo of your ticket in order to redeem your prize. So first up is the Invader Zim bundle, consisting of one magnet, three pins, and one comic. There are going to be two winners for this prize. So the first number is eight. Oh, no, that's a good idea. Do that. Okay, Drum roll, please. <laughs> eight, one, three, one, three, three. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Should we do a drum roll for each one? It's a lot of drum rolls. <laughs> Maybe in between each one. OK. All right, and the second one is Eight one three one zero three. Woohoo! All right. Okay. And next is the Ziff hoodie. There will be two winners for this prize. Drum roll, please. 
Okay. 813130. No. 813130. Woohoo. Okay, nice. And the second winner is 813144. Woohoo! All right. Next is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle bundle consisting of three pins and 10 comics. And there are two winners for this prize. Drum roll, please. The first number is 813127. Woohoo! Woo and the second number is 813137. Woohoo! All right. And the last prize bundle is the Giphy bundle. Um, there are going to be five winners for this prize. Whoa, indeed. Drum roll, please. Okay, here we go. Five numbers. The first one is 813109. 813109. Yeah, woohoo. Okay. The second number is 813119. Woohoo! The third number is 813131. 813131. Okay. Okay, we'll hold off on that one. The fourth winner is 813118. Okay, and the fifth winner is 813120. Okay, nice, woohoo. All right, well, we'll try these two numbers one more time. So the third winner was 813131, yeah? Okay, yay, yay, nice. And then the fourth number was 813118. 813118. Nice. All right. Perfect. So, congratulations to our winners. We'll see you at the raffle table at the end of the show. And thank you to our friends at Nickelodeon, Paramount, Tipmouse, and Giphy for your generous raffle donations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danielle. Well, folks. It's almost time to say goodbye, but before we go, please welcome CAF's founder and executive director, Brian Austin, to close out our event today. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Need my glasses for this. Um, I want to tell a quick story about how I got my first job in animation, and this was before the internet, before cell phones. Literally, I did not have a cell phone, so this was a different world, but I think, I think the theme may resonate a little bit. Um, it was actually 1995, and I knew nobody in the animation industry. You guys are already way ahead of me. All you, you, you know people sitting next to you, you know creative artists, you know cat, you know different people, so you're already way ahead of where I was. Um, I was a painter, so what I did is I made a postcard of one of my more extreme paintings because I wanted to get attention. And I literally got the phone book and got every animation studio in New York City and sent that postcard to the animation studios. If I got names, I sent it to the names. And once a month, I would send out that postcard. And literally for almost two years, I heard absolutely nothing. Just dead. I didn't have a reel at that time. I was working on stuff. I had some skills. But it was very frustrating. And then I got a phone call. Come in, can you do this job? We got like a three-day job. And I came in. And the, the other thing, I came in, they said, I came in for an interview. They said, we need, you're going to build a soda can. And you have to come back in on Monday, probably Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and work on the soda can. That was a Friday. I went home on the weekend, and I built the soda can. So I came in to the studio on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and literally sat there and did nothing because I had already had the soda can made. That's how eager I was to get this job. But that job led to other jobs and other jobs and other jobs. But the creative director who hired me one day said, he was so busy and so overwhelmed with work 
that he couldn't even interview anybody and he was working really late one night and he just opened the drawer next to his computer. He wasn't even, I forget what he was looking for, but there was my postcard on the top. And he pulled it out and he said, oh, let me give this guy a call. And, and so he wasn't even looking to interview an animator. I hadn't sent him any reels. He just liked the image on the card. So I think the kind of, the story around that is, it, and some of the themes I was picking up, particularly in some of the core program animations, was about being like an individual and how do you fit in, how do you find peers, how do you, how do you survive in a world where you're, you're an individual. I think you can make your mark by being an individual. So don't just send people a reel, send them a resume, send them an email. Find other ways to get yourself known. If you like to draw, send them drawings. If you like to dance, do a dance, all sorts of things. But get yourself out there. Don't be afraid to be yourself. And you'll find, some cr some, you'll, you'll find creativity in that and you'll find success in that. Um, and the other thing, just to, to end this, um, oh, who's that? Um, <laughs> The, 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 the really important thing is companies don't hire people. People hire people. So just remember that the person you're interviewing with is somebody who's probably really stressed out, so somebody overwhelmed, but it's not a company. It's people and people. So network, get to know people, and again, just be super creative. Um, I want to thank all the sponsors and all the, the people that have helped us throughout the years, and in particular, someone who snuck in um, kind of midway through the show. Aaliyah Jones over there, she was the one that kind of started us in really expanding and giving us a real citywide reach. I want to thank her in, in particular. And thank you guys for coming. Um, and definitely network and be yourself when you network. Make yourself known. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Let's give it up for Brian. Okay, lastly, we want to take a moment to acknowledge all of you in the audience who were a part of an animation that you saw today. If your film was on the screen today, please stand. Yes. Yeah, stay, stay standing, stay standing, you talented, talented folks. If you are here supporting the mission and the work of the Made in New York Animation Project, please join them and stand now. <laughs> amazing, amazing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you are proud, excited, or moved in any way by something you saw on the screen tonight, please join them and stand now. Amazing, and if you worked or spoke during today's event, lifting up the work of top participants, please stand. Yeah. Let's give it up to everyone who made today possible. <laughs> Congratulations to our artists, and thank you so much to everyone for coming today and celebrating our community's work on the big screen. For more information about TAP, stay connected, and have a great night, everyone.